as a as a cheeky young artist in Manila practicing and experimenting in uh, new forms or what I believe was new forms of art in in early 2000s Manila I was always confronted by older artists comparing me to like this or that work or this or that artist from an older generation but when I confront these artists they say oh I forgot about that or I um there's no material evidence there's no there's not much um, uh, evidence of their practices, especially because one, there were, there's no material documentation, there was not much publications, and um, they were too drunk to remember. Um, so um, this presentation happened by accident. Um, I was looking into the re uh, the work of an artist, Roxley. And but for a, an exhibition at the Hakave earlier this year, um, and we amassed a, a large collection of his publications dating back until the 70s. And it was through exposure to these magazines that I was able to like map um, a new kind of ecology, which I could trace from the 70s until actually the present through one super seminal publication called Jingle, which was uh, like the Rolling Stones of the Philippines. And it connected a lot of punks, poets, posers, uh, researchers, activists, and a lot of them were experimenting and developing new spaces and exper uh, dabbling with new forms of practice that didn't really have names yet. So, the presentation would be divided into first like uh, culprits, people they were comparing me with. First with Tad Ermitaño, an artist um, who's been active since the 1980s. Also part of a seminal... Um, This is the robots part of hey. the Those were uh, motion reactive robots, ro Gamelon robots. And this is an with these artists who were active since the 70s, 80s, like, the question arises, like, where were they doing stuff? Um, there were no uh, material evidence that the CCP, the, quote, the institutions of that period, were, were showcasing their works or supporting them. So one of the questions that arose was, were, what spaces, what support groups did they have? And this is another artist, uh, Lirio Salvador, part of uh, artist collective Elemento, who was making sound uh, assemblages with chrome objects, bicycle parts, and whatnot. This is. And then you had um, artists, and I also identified with the punk movement, uh, like Romeo Lee on the right. On the left, and um, 
and uh, poets experimenting with installation like Cesare Suhuko on the and uh, and this is the up oh, where Three points, of course, is like le reading through a lot of the um, credits of the films, and so unlike the presentations before, which were really looking at publications as uh, sites in themselves and as um, points of narrative, I'm looking at publications more as entry points and trying to map out the psychology, um, starting with um, I think. Jingle, which established this key network. So Jingle was established in 1970, and here's like the actual paper for it. <laughs> like registration, 1970, you have the actual date, October 20th, 1970. So it was, um, this was the artist, uh, one of the artists who was crawling just now, that's, um, that's uh, Rocky Lee or Roxley, um, making a very, Bad joke. Dina Kip, it's like um, captured. It was um, this this publication ran through martial law, where a lot of activists, artists were uh, disappeared. Um, there was a lot of humor, <laughs> um, and not only was it a music magazine, but it was also a literary magazine that had a lot of experiments with comics, with poetry, uh, different forms of literature, and of course, like, the suspects of the day, Simon and Garfunkel, Juan de la Cruz, a local band. Um, what they'd, they'd have a parchment section, like, for example, this is an illustration by Roxley, um, with a quote from Dylan Thomas. And on the reverse side, you'd have chords. So 
you can actually, uh, what, they, what made Jingle Magazine unique was, um, they'd get all the songs, all the top 40 songs, and all the weird ones that they liked, and they'd create tablatures for them. And so you could like jam along to your favorite tunes. And there was also poetry. Anton Remoto, when he was a student, now chair of poetry in Ateneo. Um, and this is very interesting. Like, Cesare Sihuko, conceptualists, productioneers, and friends. So, um, as I mentioned a while ago, like Cesare Sihuko, also a poet, um, was also like uh, quite seminal in um, exploring uh, another vein of uh, conceptual art separate from Chibet, whom some of you might be aware of, and also helping organize Battle of the Bands. And a lot of uh, writers, for at least four generations of contributors who would later on establish other careers uh, were part of Jingle Magazine throughout its run from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Cesare Sihuko would make a name for himself experimenting with video and installation and poetry in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, other people like Lav Diaz also started as a writer and in in uh, in Jingle Magazine, um, and other contributors would form uh, Ermita, which was very much a drug fueled project, which in, was um, actually if you look into Crip Yusan's notes from just last year, he mentioned that it was inspired by um, a, a natural smoking trip in the mountains with the Baguio Arts Guild. And looking at the cover art, you, you might get an idea <laughs> of confirmation. <laughs> so not so directly connected to music culture, underground music culture, but definitely a lot of drugs and drinking. That's the editor in chief <laughs> <laughs> with Brandy, just uh, this script on. Also dabbling with video and film in the 70s. Uh, Nick Joaquin standing with a bottle of beer. National Artist for Literature. Um, and this was a group exhibition organized by um, Crip Houston and Friends. That's him with less hair in the 80s. Um, at Pinaglabanan galleries. So um, you could see like f from, from this initial network in Jingle, um, in collaboration with artists, they, they tried to experiment together and um, form different trajectories of practice. And Pinaglabanan was one of the few independent sites outside uh, major galleries and institutions like the CCP where uh, people could experiment. And it was very, very um, curious for me how such disparate characters would wind up in one ecology, in one exhibition, coming from like very, very different backgrounds, it's looking at their careers now. And Red Racket, um, was a fanzine uh, dedicated to an uh, underground rock club. And this was it. This is uh, Joey Pepe Smith, who was part of Juan de la Cruz. You saw a photo of a while ago. Again, the figure of Rocks, the um, animator, writer, uh, the guy crawling. Um, Cesar Hernando, uh, known as a set designer and for Mike DeLeon and other uh, art house filmmakers. Um, but Red Racket was also um, uh, operated by the children of Cato Dre. 
So it was photocopied, also very drug fueled. This time, sh uh, methamphetamine. <laughs> yep. Am I okay for time? Um, but from here, you could see like uh, evidence of uh, where else like these experiments in form in practice were. Uh, also uh, being nurtured, like uh, you can see here, short films in between um, I Don't Like Mondays and Rock and Roll with the Jerks. And then lastly, um, I'd like to cap off with Lunar Landing, which was also uh, run by an artist duo, Alice and Lucinda, uh, Lena Kobangbang and Yasmin uh, Sison, operating from '97, uh, ni and this was the cover of the first. And it neatly sums up, like punk culture and um, and the contemporary art scene. So you'd have great moments in punk. And then advertising for um, a, uh, an alternative space called Surrounded by Water. And then their own version of the 13th Artist Award, which was established in the 70s under the uh, Roberto Chabat with the CCP, and their own version of it. I Gotta Have It Artist Award, Gustatory Cocktail Culinaire Award. <laughs> and what is installation art? What is mixed media? Oops. And um, this this form of in, an informal distribution through fanzines still continues until today. Um, so this was um, a recent um, photocopy publication by one of the members of uh, like Lunar Landing, uh, Lena Kubangbang, that's, that's her. And it's actually a compilation of writings, interviews with sound artists from 1999 to 2006. So, well, to conclude, like, um, there was a comment yesterday that, um, you know, looking at, I think that th the first guy who asked the question to Charles, like primary literature and whatnot, and I'm 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 looking at the history of practice, histories of practice with not no primary literature whatsoever. So, and the only way to get around it or to make headway to it is through exploring these magazines, these informal publications, and reading a lot between the lines in. In other publications, like Ermita or music magazines, like Django. To, to hopefully map out, like, <laughs> um, a history of experimentation. It all started with Bob Dylan. Thank you.